quick overview of um, visual perceptual skills. Again, it's, it's based on a hierarchy. You need to have lower level skills intact before you can work up to the higher level. Um, the lower level, when it talks about acuity, that's actually your eyesight. It's what you know you think of as 2020. It's your vision, what you, what you see, it's your eyesight at distance. Um, your visual field is, again, what you're able to see around you. Typically, in um, brain injury, there's um, a possibility of having a neglect. And we get our information um, from usually neuro-ophthalmology will come in and do a good assessment. Um, and they'll tell us, we do informal testing, but they're the ones who will tell us if there is, in fact, a problem with the visual field, whether it's just a cut or an actual, um, I mean, a neglect or a cut. Eye tracking are your saccades, your fixations, and your pursuits. It's a different way your eyes move when tracking something quickly or scanning or your ability to focus. The higher level skills that we would be working on, and again, we would work on them on the lowest level first, typically in a 2D manner before we work onto a manipulative or a, a practicing skill with ADL, and I'll go over that in a minute. Um, it's your visual attention, pattern recognition, which is, of course, knowing, recognizing shapes and patterns that they might follow, your visual memory, uh, cognition, figure ground, your ability to perceive foreground from background when you see many objects together, being able to see them. Spatial relations has to do with directionality, um, something's up and down, left and right. Form constancy is knowing that a shape is a shape in different aspects, knowing that a, a circle is the same as a ball, is the same as a tomato. Um, and graphomotor skills are writing skills, and we hone in on that because that's something very practical that people need to work to get through their day. Um, again, higher level skills develop or evolve from the integration of lower skills. Framework is a bottom-up approach to evaluation and for treatment. And you think of it as a, a regular triangle where the lower level skills are on the bottom going all the way up with your, your scanning, your tracking, your form constancy, and at the end you get, at the very top, executive functioning. Again, we want to always work on the deficits that are in the lower level skills to allow for normal integration of the higher level skills. The research out is that perceptual dysfunction often includes remedial retraining with treatment tasks to provide patients with practice in deficit areas. Dr. Gordon was saying there are certain things, by practicing the sheer fact of repetition, they're going to get better. When you, you fill out a checkbook, there are certain things you have to have before you can even fill out the checkbook. You have to be able to recognize numbers. You have to be able to recognize letters. You have to be able to put them in sequential order. You have to have the physical coordination. So we wouldn't go right around, you know, first up, second day up, to trying to fill out a checkbook, but rather to have all the things in place first. We want to avoid frustration and have, of course, patients feel successful. And we grade the task always trying to have as much success as possible so people actually enjoy therapy. Um, and again, the research is out is that the skills that we practice on a 2D approach can transfer over and people will have success practicing the real things. Um, again, from the journal, that training and functional activities may be a better way to improve performance with brain injury. Um, I'll give examples. When we're talking about figure ground, someone having a hard time separating foreground from background, typically we might do um, a task on paper first. We might just put three circles on a piece of paper and maybe one square and ask a person if they can identify the square and then trace the square and then maybe outline the square. Um, the way that we would upgrade that moving down when someone has gotten better with their figure, figure ground but still have deficits, we might have um, a bunch of socks and ask the patient to either sort the socks or discriminate, having a whole bunch of socks together and then say picking out the red pair in the drawer. Um, again, we use the kitchen a lot. I, I particularly like the kitchen only because you have to eat the rest of your life. Um, looking at a crowded refrigerator, picking out the bottle of ketchup amongst everything else on the drawer, looking just for one salt shaker when you have a cabinet filled with a whole bunch of spices. That's an example of working with figure ground in a practical 
functional approach rather just on paper and pencil. Um, example two ex for sequencing, again we're always grading tasks from the lower level to the higher. Um, we might do a, t um, a 2D approach for sequencing. We might give someone starting out very basic um, putting, lighting the barbecue for example. Light the barbecue, get out the food, close the cover, cook the food. And again, it's just putting the tasks in order. And then when they become consistent on paper as OTs, we like to do it into a practical. And the laundry is also another good, just taking one colored set of clothes, going upstairs, seeing if they can dispense the right amount of detergent. You get the idea. And upgrading it till you might have dark and light clothes. You might have a fabric softener plus the detergent. See if they can actually do the task and take it out and put it in the dryer. Um, a third example, when you're working on, let's say, judgment, memory, attention, and safety, um, a 2D approach might be cards. And there's lots of different things on the market that we practice with, um, a safe way and an unsafe way, whether it's walking up the stairs with groceries and having the patient just literally looking through the cards, comparing the safe way versus the unsafe way, and then doing a cooking task and grading it and having someone maybe not even cook the first time they get into the kitchen, but rather just pull out the ingredients, looking for um, if they're turning on, let's say when we get into using the stove, are they checking the oven first? Um, and are they able to follow a five-step cooking task versus an eight-step cooking task? And are they working on their balance while they're doing that? And are they safe with their cane? So again, that's what we do as OTs. We try and make it as practical as possible, always trying again to get them back to pre-injury, pre-disease level. Did it go in on me? No. Again, by addressing cognitive um, deficits, we approve all aspects of an individual's life. Hopefully we're decreasing falls at home and in the community. Uh, balance is a, a big thing that we work on and that takes a while for that to come back to learn skill, improving abilities in self-care and daily care routine by the sheer fact of practicing and learning new ways to do it, improve endurance and strength at home and improving functional independence with better problem solving and reasoning skills. Thank you.